Um, so till now, what we have started, we started with the introduction of complex number and so uh, saw why we required this number system, and we kept and how we define the rules and structures we define for uh, uh, for defining a complex number. That is first we define a set of complex number, and then we define what would be the st uh, structure for this complex number. What would be the operations of this complex number? How will we define them? And we even saw that this this complex number is the extension of the real number system. So all the properties in the real number system will even hold uh, all the properties that are even in the complex number has to be valid even for real number which are the part of complex number system only. Now let us try and understand some definitions related to complex number. I am writing its abbreviation CN for now. So the first definition is that of modulus of Z. We have already discussed this in the beginning. So mod Z is always defined if Z is a complex number of the form X plus iota Y then Z would be equal to Z mod Z that is defined as modulus of Z is equals to under root of X square plus Y square. Similarly, there is one more term related to uh, complex number that is defined um, that is conjugate of Z. So, if I say Z, uh, it is defined as if Z is X plus iota Y then it is conjugate which is denoted by Z bar. Please do not confuse this bar with the arrow sign of vector this is just a bar on z this is equals to x minus iota y so if z is x plus iota y then it's conjugate z bar is defined to be x minus iota y now let's see what we get when we multiply z by z bar this would be equals to x plus iota y into x minus iota y. We have already discussed this one as a special case of the multiplication of two complex numbers. What I get here is x square plus y square. And if I see the definition of mod z, what is mod z? Mod z is under root of x square plus y square. And what I am getting here is x square plus y square. So this is equals to mod z whole square. So we have defined multiplicate. Uh, we have defined multiplic. Uh, what uh, we have defined that the multiplication of a complex number by its conjugate give us modulus. Uh, give us square of its modulus. Uh, one more thing, uh, let us see how we can represent this z on argon plane, this z, z bar on argon plane. So, what I know till now is z is equals to x plus iota y, then z bar is equals to x minus iota y and mod z is equals to under root of x square plus y square. Let us plot this on organ plane. If this is my organ plane, with this as the real axis and this as the imaginary axis and this is the point z which is representing x comma y which is representing the ordered pair x comma y I join z with origin I know this is r 
which is equals to mod z which is equals to under root of square plus y square now what is z bar z bar is x minus iota y so x is going to be same and instead of y being in the first quadrant this is going to be in the fourth quadrant because in this case our imaginary coefficient of z is negative so what i get here is x comma minus y this is x comma minus y join this this point represents z bar now from this diagram one thing i can see is z bar is nothing but the mirror image of z with respect to the real axis see this distance is same because this is even y this is even y the x coordinates are same so uh z bar the mirror image of z with respect to the real axis is nothing but z bar so let us some observe some important uh, interesting properties related to the conjugate and modulus of a complex number now let us discuss some properties related to conjugate of a complex number so we already see uh, so let us consider first a complex number z of the form x plus iota y sorry z equals to x plus iota y so we already define that its conjugate z bar would be x minus iota y now again pointing out this is represented by z bar not the vector uh, not the vector sign that is on z so please never confuse z bar with z vector so the first property that is related to conjugate of a complex number is mod of z is always equals to mod of z bar this is very simple to prove and this is very easy to prove i know what is mod of z mod of z is x square plus y square what is mod of z bar that is even under root of x square plus y square so both are equal second i know conjugate of the conjugate of z is always equals to z we can even prove this i know what is z bar z bar is x minus iota y what would be what would be its conjugate its conjugate would be conjugate of x minus iota y which is going to be x plus iota y which is equals to nothing but z so i can easily write conjugate of a conjugate number is nothing but z third is z bar is the mirror image of z in real axis we already proved this property earlier when we saw that if we plot z on the complex plane then z bar would be nothing but its image with respect to the real axis fourth is z plus z bar is equals to twice the real part of z i know what is z x plus i to y what is z bar x minus i to y when i add these two both what i get is 2x plus and iota y would kill will cancel minus iota y so we are left is 2x that is nothing but the real part of z similarly the fifth one is z minus z bar is twice imaginary of z the, even this one can be proved 
z is x plus iota y minus z bar would be minus x plus iota y when we add these two what we are going to get is twice imaginary of z sixth one is z1 plus z2 plus z3 up to z in bar is going to be equal to z1 bar z2 bar up to z in bar seventh one is z1 minus z2 bar these are properties all related to the addition, uh, addition of the conjugates or the multiplication of conjugates is equal to z1 bar minus z2 bar another one is z1 into z2 bar is equal to z1 bar into z2 bar you can prove all these properties by simply put, uh, multiplying I mean putting z1 as x1 iota y1 z2 is x2 iota y2 and just putting these values here these all can be very easily proved I get z n bar is equal to z bar to the power n another one is z into z bar is equal to mod z square we have already seen the proof of this property when we multiply these two what we are going to get is x square minus iota y whole square which is nothing but x square plus y square which is nothing but mod z square there is one more important one which is if alpha is a function in z with real coefficients then alpha bar would be a function of conjugate of z let us just see one, uh, these properties once again and I will suggest you all to note down these properties because these are really helpful and are a really quick solution to some of the problems for example we can always write z plus z bar equals to twice real of z and, and solve any problem very quickly we'll, we are going to see some more problems based on this conjugate of s modulus of z based on the algebraic uh, operations like addition multiplication subtraction and z then we will see how these properties are going to be very helpful and we will save a lot of time but would be a very quick trick to solve problems so then z bar is the mirror image of z in real axis z plus z bar is twice real of z z minus z bar is imaginary of z into twice similarly uh, z1 z2 z in addition whole conjugate is equals to addition of z1 conjugate plus z2 conjugate up to z in conjugate same holds true for division uh, for subtraction multiplication that holds even true for division that is z1 upon z2 whole bar is equals to z1 bar upon z2 bar z n bar is equal to z bar to the power n z z bar is mod z square and if alpha is the function in f of z with real coefficients please note that if alpha here the coefficients have to be real then alpha bar would be a function in f of z bar now the next one we are going to discuss is some properties related to modulus of z let us see those properties now we wanted to discuss properties related to the conjugate now let us discuss properties related to the modulus of a complex number so the first property that is related to the modulus of a complex number is if mod of z is equal to 0 this implies only this implies that z is equal to 0 that is mod of z would be equal to 0 if and only if z is equal to 0 so I am again considering the complex number z of the form x plus iota y what is going to be mod z mod z is nothing but under root of x square plus y square now for this term to be 0 both x and y has to be 0 because x square is even positive and y square is even positive as x and y are real numbers 
This implies mod z will be equal to 0 only if z is equal to 0. Another one is uh, one more thing that which we should take care note of is that mod z is always equal to 0 because it is under root of square under root of the addition of two positive numbers x square is always positive and y square is always positive and even when you try to understand this geometrically what is mod z mod z is nothing but the displacement of this complex number z from the origin so which has to be always positive second property is mod of z is always equal to mod of minus z is always equal to mod of conjugate of z and is always equal to mod of minus of conjugate of z. We have already seen that mod of z and mod of z bar are always equal. Similarly, what is minus, what is going to be minus z here? It is going to be minus x minus iota by whole square. So, what is going to be mod of minus z? It is going to be minus of x whole square plus minus of y whole square under root this is nothing but equal to x square plus y square under root. So, this is going to be equal. Another property is the real part of z always lies between minus of mod z to plus of mod z. And the fourth one is imaginary part of z always lies between plus of mod z and minus of mod z. Let us try and see how we can prove these two properties. So, considering z equals to x plus iota y, I can always write mod z square is equals to x square plus y square. Now, this is a positive number because it is addition of the squares of two number. So, I can very easily write x square plus y square would be always greater than or equal to x square. The equality is going to hold when y would be equal to 0 otherwise x square plus y square is always going to be greater than x square. When I am taking under root of this equation what I am going to get is mod of under root of x square plus y square would be always greater than mod of x. What is x? x is the real part of z and what is mod of x square, square plus y square it is nothing but modulus of z. So, I can always say that x lies between minus of mod z to plus of mod z and similarly the same thing we can always say for the imaginary part. The fifth property is mod of z mod of z to the power n is nothing but equals to mod of z to the power n. The sixth one is mod of z1 z2 is equals to mod of z1 into mod of z2 and similarly I can say define the same thing for addition uh, so division that is mod of z1 upon z2 is equals to mod of z1 divided by mod of z2. There are two very important properties related to com uh, modulus of complex number. These are defined as even triangular inequality. Uh, even before that, let us state one, two more properties related to complex number. Uh, another one is mod of z1 plus z2 whole square is equals to mod z1 square plus z2 square plus twice real of z1, z2. And the another one is z1 minus z2 ka mod whole square 
is equals to z1 square mod z2 square minus twice of real of z1 z2 so from here what i can say is mod z1 plus z2 whole square I'm doing nothing. I'm just adding these two. What it turns out to be twice of mod of z1 square plus z2 square. Now, let's get to the two most important properties related to complex number, which are known as triangular inequality. So the first property that is related to is mod z1 upon z2. is always less than or equals to mod of z1 plus mod of z2 now let us see how we can prove this property what i am doing is i am squaring mod of z1 plus z2 from i already know that mod z square is always equals to z into z bar Here, what is my z? It is z1 plus z2. So I can write this as z1 plus z2 into z1 plus z2 bar. When I expand this, what I am going to get is z1 into z1 bar plus z2 into z2 bar plus twice. Plus z1 z2 bar plus z1 bar z2. Now this is going to be nothing but mod, uh, this is nothing but mod z1 square. This is nothing but mod z2 square. And this is what? This is twice real of z1 z2. This is not even and uh, similar. Uh, somehow we even prove this property. That is mod z1 plus z2 whole square is equal to twice uh, z1 square plus z2 square plus twice real of z1 z2. So I can write this as mod z1 square plus mod z2 square plus twice real of z1 z2. Now from this property, I always know that the real part of z. Always lies between minus mod of z and plus mod of z. So if I replace this real of z one z two by mod of z, I can change this equality sign by this greater than equal to sign. I'm repeating once again. What I'm saying is. from this property that is real of z always lies between minus of mod z to plus of mod z um we know that real of mod z is real of z always lies between minus mod z to plus mod z so i am doing here is instead of this real of z1 z2 if i write mod of z1 z2 then i can change this equality sign by the greater than or equal to sign at first i am putting all the values as same So what I get here is mod z1 square plus mod z2 square plus twice mod of z1 z2. This is nothing. Now, from this property, we know that mod of z1 z2 is equals to mod of z1 into z2. So instead of this mod of z1 and z2, I can always write mod of z1 into mod of z2. What we had done was we got This equals to twice of real of z1 z2. We know that real of z always lies between mod of z2 minus mod of z. So, uh, so what I did was I replaced this z1 z2 by mod of z1 z2 and replaced this equality sign by greater than or equal to sign. Now, from this property, I know that mod of z1 z2 is equal to mod of z1 into z2. So, what I did was I replaced mod of z1 z2 by mod of z1 into mod of z2. Now, when I observe this clear, observe this. This is this is what. This is the formula of mod z1 whole square 
plus mod z2 mod z1 plus z2 whole square so what we have got is mod z1 plus z2 whole square is less than or equal to mod z1 plus mod z2 whole square now mod z1 plus mod z2 is a positive term mod z1 is a positive term this is even a positive term so i am taking positive square root so the result which i can establish is mod z1 plus z2 is always less than or equals to mod z1 plus mod z2 the equality is going to hold when one of these term is uh, even if the z1 is zero or z2 is zero or both are zero otherwise it always going to be less than now let us try to do so now let us try to derive some more results based on this one so i know that mod of z1 this let's say this is my 11th property i know that mod of z1 plus z2 is less than equals to mod of z1 plus z2 let us try to derive some more results based on this so what i am doing is so i am replacing z2 by minus z2 here so i can write this as mod z1 mod of minus z2 this is what this is less than equals to mod of z1 minus mod of z2 plus minus of mod z2 what do you know from here is mod of z is always equals to minus of mod z mod of minus z so i can write minus mod z2 as mod z2 so mod z1 minus z2 is less than equals to mod z1 So this is our first result. Let us try something else. I have mod z1. I can even write this as mod z1 minus z2 plus z2. I'm doing nothing. I'm, I'm what I've done is I've just subtracted and added z2. Now considering this as one complex number and this as another complex number. i am writing here is mod z i am sorry considering this as one complex number and this is one complex number i am again applying my triangular inequality so i can say this term is less than or equal to mod of z1 minus z2 plus mod of z2 that is mod z1 is less than equals to mod of z1 minus z2 plus mod of z2 what i um, what i have done is uh, instead of uh, i have written z1 as z1 minus z2 plus z2 now i have applied triangular inequality here so i got uh, mod of z1 minus z2 is less than equal to mod of z1 minus z2 plus z2 now i am transferring z2 from here to here what i'm getting is mod of z1 minus mod of z2 is less than or equals to mod of z1 minus mod of z2 this is my next property that is related to triangular inequality which says that mod of z1 minus z2 is less than is always greater than or equal to mod of z1 minus mod of z2 so now uh, let's again revise the properties that we relate uh, we have started related to properties of our modulus of a conjugate, conjugate number the first one is if mod z is equals to 0 this implies that z will have to be equal to 0 then all these modulus of all these modulus that is modulus of z Minus z, z bar, minus z bar, all are equal. And then the two more most important properties are that real of z and imaginary of z always lies between minus of mod z to plus of mod z. Then these are properties related to the power, multiplication, and division of modulus. And these are two very important properties called the triangular inequality properties, which says that mod of z1 plus z2. 
is less than or equals to mod of z1 plus mod of z2 and mod of z1 minus z2 is greater than or equal to mod of z1 minus mod of z2 and these are properties due to the square uh, uh, square of the addition and the uh, subtraction of two complex numbers. So today uh, what we learned uh, what we have studied was the evolution of complex numbers then all the operations uh, that is the structures that we have defined in complex number keeping into consideration that are, they are in parallel with complex uh, with real numbers then we start uh, then we learned about uh, the definitions for modulus of complex number conjugate of complex number how we can represent complex number in a 2d plane and uh, uh, how we can represent complex uh, the ordered pair xy in terms of the polar coordinates r comma theta so now let us proceed and solve some questions based on these all properties so that we can understand them better what we have realized till now although we are calling this as imaginary number but these are not actually imaginary numbers if these would have been imaginary then we would have all such applications based on these complex number the complex number not only helps in solving most of the problems and adds to the richness of mathematics or algebra they really they provide even real understanding of lots of physical problem for example we can represent the state of current in terms of the voltage and the current flowing through the circuit similarly we can ex even express inductance and capacitance in its term so complex number is a very big topic and got a huge set of application so the next question that we have to solve is we have to find value of x to the power 4 plus 4x cube plus 6x square plus 4x plus 9 and we have been given that x equals to under root of 2 into iota minus 1 I like you all to solve this question first it's very, this is really an easy one we have been given value of x we just need to find the value of this equation it's not a difficult one just try once We already know how to how to find powers of x, or powers of iota. I hope you would have all you all would have solved it by now. I'm sure most of you would would have done is what you would have substituted the, the value of x that is root to iota minus one uh, into this equation and then would have taken up to the power uh, found the power 4 cube square of it and then would have solved it, it and got an answer finally I say this is even a, what you have done is not wrong that is even one way to solve the problem but there could be one some smart way to solve this problem even that will save our multiplication and all the calculation by a lot so what I am doing is we are, we are given x equals to root 2 iota minus 1 I can write this as x plus 1 is equals to root 2 iota I am squaring this both so what I get is x square plus 1 plus 2x is equals to 2 into iota square which is equals to minus 1 so what I get from here is x square plus 2x plus 3 equals to 0 this is one equation that we have found out we have the right now uh, we know that x square plus 2x plus 3 equals to 0 and we have to find the value of this equation now what I can do is I can try to write this equation in terms of this equation so that wherever this equation is there I can put 0 let's try to let's try and see I think this is going to simplify our problem because wherever we'll get this equation we'll put it 0 and that we will save a lot of computation and uh, calculation so I can write this complete term as x square into x square plus 2x plus 3 plus 2x 
into x square plus 2x plus 3 minus x square plus 2x plus 3 plus 12. I have done is I have written this complete term whose value we had to derive in terms of x square plus 2x plus 3. What do I get from here is x square into 0 plus 2x into 0 minus 0 plus 12 which is equals to 12. See if we would have substituted its value here in solid this going problem would have been a very lengthy one and would have consumed a lot of time in examination. But just a small uh, a, a little bit of uh, smart work saved us so much of calculation and we directly derived the answer. Let us see some more problems of this type. Next is we have to express this equation that is x square plus 1 into y square plus 1 into z square plus 1 as the sum of 2 squares. Now uh, let us start solving this one. What I can do is I can write x square plus 1 as x square minus of minus 1 whole square which is going to be equal to x square of minus into minus 1 this is going to be equal to x square minus iota square because minus 1 is iota, iota square is minus 1. So, I can write this as x minus iota into x plus iota. Similarly, I can do for y square plus 1 and z square plus 1. So, I can write this as x square x plus iota into x minus I can write this term as into x minus iota into y plus iota into y minus iota into z plus iota into z minus iota. I am taking all these terms on one side and all the minus terms on one side just for the sake of symmetry. So, I get is x plus i into y plus i into z plus i and here what I get is x minus i into y minus i into z minus i. Solving this equation what I get is x y z minus x minus y minus z plus iota x y plus y z plus z x minus 1 into this is the expansion of this one and when I expand this I get is and this is the expansion of x plus iota into y plus iota into z plus iota. And when I expand this x minus i into y minus i into z minus i into what I get is x y z minus x minus y minus z minus iota x y plus y z plus z x minus 1. Now when I see this is something in the form of a plus iota b into a minus iota b. So, I can write this as a square minus b square. So, this is equals to x y z minus x minus y minus z whole square minus iota of x iota of x y plus y z plus z x minus 1 whole square. Now, I know iota square is minus 1. So, I can write this whole square as iota square into this whole square. Iota square is minus 1. So, I can replace this minus sign by plus 1. So, I get this as 
square of x y z minus x minus y minus z whole square plus x y plus y z plus z x minus whole square. Now let's see another question. Something based on the powers of iota. 